My name is Suboptimal and I'm just some random guy on the internet. Now in this video, we'll go over how to build a Vim tutor with React.js. So for those of you that don't know, Vim is basically just a code editor that helps you increase your coding productivity by providing you with ergonomic key bindings. Nowadays, lots of code editors like VS Code and Sublime Text are already configurable with Vim key bindings. So getting started with Vim is pretty easy but the hard part is sticking with Vim because you have to practice the key bindings and it's easy to forget and just go back to our old habits of using arrow keys and things like that. So that's where something like Vim Tutor can come into play. Now I do wanna mention that I got the inspiration for this app from Vim.so, which is an app made by this person named Kenneth. He posted it on Hacker News a few months ago, I think, and I thought it was a cool idea, so I just wanted to see how you can recreate it using React. Cool, with that out of the way, let's get started with a quick demo of the Vim Tutor. Here you guys can see the code editor that I've got displayed and what you can do is run Vim commands on it. And right now I've instructed the user to move with the basic Vim movement commands and delete this letter with X. The point of this game is to help you get better at Vim. So you can move with your with J to go down, you can move K to go up, and then you can, you know, go all the way to the right and then press X. And as soon as you do that, it says you've won one game, so you can move on to the next one. Now I can also press DD to remove it and win the game. The whole point of this is to get you familiar with using Vim commands and just practice and practice and practice. And if everything goes great, then we should be able to build it within 60 lines of code. So let's get started. So what I always like to do is start React with Tailwind CSS. Now, if you guys want to build out the exact project from scratch, then you can follow the directions on this website. And basically it sets up create React app and then it, it walks you through how to install Tailwind CSS. But because I don't wanna do all those configurations, I created a separate client over here. And basically this client, I'm just going to copy it into the uh, demo project that I've created, created right now, which is Vim Tutor Live. And what it's going to do is just set up React with Tailwind. So I'll see you guys as soon as that's completed. Just as a quick note, you can easily copy the code from my React Tailwind template folder inside of my coding tutorial repository. So, you know, if you guys want to get the exact same starter template, then just, you know, take this client code, pull it into your project and you should be good to go. So now that the code has been downloaded, what we got to do is actually run an NPM install. And the reason is because, you know, this code, it's not copying the node module. So let me CD out and then let me do an LS. So we got our client right here. What we want to do is run npm install and what this is doing is it's basically just installing the react and the uh, tailwind css so once that's set up we should be able to do npm run start and this is going to open up the client inside of localhost 3000 and you know, you'll just see the base React template. Now I do wanna mention that I took out a lot of the unnecessary files because I don't really care about, you know, displaying the React logo or the default code. So all I've got here is the learn React button. So I removed a ton of um, external files like the report web vitals and things like that. So this is just a very bare bones React app. Now, once you've set that up, the next thing to do is to install Code Mirror. So Code Mirror is the library that helps you display an editor. So this is the library that it's gonna tell you to install. But the thing is they recently updated it, which is kind of annoying. I made a Code Mirror project last week and I tried copying that same code and it wasn't working. And it turns out it's because they updated it to V4. So we actually don't want V4, we want V3 mainly because I'm more familiar with v3. Here I'm going to do an npm install and I'm going to install the uh, 3.2.1 version. So that's the version before uh, Code Mirror 4.0 and basically Code Mirror 4.0 had a couple breaking changes. So it, rather than trying to figure that out, I just decided to, you know, use the previous Code Mirror version. Anyway, 
uh, we're going to install code mirror and let's just get code mirror up and running all we want to do is import code mirror from the library we just installed i think it's uiw code mirror and we want to import i think it's ah yes so it's like this so we're going to import code mirror and let's just go to this uh, code over here and just copy what, what they got going on over here. Now this code again is a little bit new. Um, so I'm gonna remove this and just keep it uh, very bare bones, save it. And you should see the code mirror pop up on screen. Oh, I guess I forgot to run the app. So let me just do npm run start. And as soon as that's up and running, we should see code mirror uh, up as well. Now, as that's coming up, I do want to import uh, one thing, which is just the Dracula theme, because I don't really like the default code mirror theme. So I'm going to go to code uh, mirror slash, I think it's theme slash Dracula.css. So, you know, this is the default code mirror that we're uh, setting up and as you can see we're basically setting the value to be hello world we're setting the height and then basically on change we're console.logging the value so um, you know you know if we change it you know you'll see like the value being logged here here and what I want to do is import the Dracula CSS theme and to do that we set it to options and I think it's theme and then we just do Dracula so importing Dracula theme like this, then we can just set the theme uh, to Dracula like so. And finally, the last thing I wanna do is, as you can see, the code here is not all the way to the left, so it looks kind of weird. So let me add a parent div. And in this div, I'm just going to set the class name. And let's just do a little bit of styling here. So let's do left maybe 20 right 20 top 20 bottom 20 i guess let's also do text left so basically all i'm doing is styling what's happening in the code mirror here and if we refresh the page we should see that you know we can sort of like start typing inside of our code so now what we want to do is actually create the Vim Tutor, the Vim game that is gonna help you learn Vim. Just, just think about what we wanna do. We want to basically create a list of lines and in one of the lines, we want to add a percent symbol, right? That's all we're doing. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we got these three things to work with. We got the value, we got the options, and then we got the on change. And let me change this to editor because that's actually what it is. And if I refresh this, right, you'll see here the value of the editor is console.log. The first thing we can do is just add a simple little test. So let's say that um, we create a const and this const is gonna create the percent symbol, right? So this is gonna be called the code test. And what we wanna do is maybe add a couple spaces, one, two, three, oops, one, two, three, four, five. And let's add more spaces than that, just so it's a little uh, nicer. Five, five, five. And then in the last one, let's add the percent symbol. So what we wanna do is instead of having it be console.log, we want to set the value of this to be the coding test, right? The, sorry, the Vim test, I guess. So let's call this Vim test. And then let's change this to Vim test. So now if we save it, we should see that, you know, we got our one liner over here. So now what we want to do is ensure that the user is only doing this through Vim commands, right? We don't want them to do this through just normal arrow keys. So let's import the Vim key bindings. So code mirror makes this again, real easy to do this. So code mirror. And I think it's lib and then key map, sorry, and then it's vim, like so. And now you can pass in the options, and the option here is going to be the key map option, and you can pass in vim like so. 
And so what this is doing is ensuring that, you know, code mirror is going to be running Vim. So if you refresh this, and then you click this, you'll notice here that right now I'm running Vim command. So obviously the arrow keys are going to work. But if I press, you know, uh, H, J, K, L, it's also working, it's also moving to the left and right. If the editor's value does not contain a percent symbol, let's say we console.log that the user wins. So whenever the editor is updating, we can get the value of the editor. And then we say if editor dot get value dot in, dot includes um, if it includes that then we do nothing otherwise you know we can console.log that uh, the user won so you won so all we did so far is set up code mirror with vim key bindings and all we're doing is ensuring that whatever's inside of this uh, code mirror editor um, if it still includes the percent symbol then we're just going to display what the current text is otherwise we're going to say that the user was uh, able to remove this using vim commands and then that the user won so let's see how this works so I'm going to start over here. I'm going to start pressing X, and you're going to notice that you know this thing is changing. Obviously, uh, you know you can also see it in the console over here that the new value is being updated. And as soon as uh, let me clear this, as soon as we sort of remove the this value, we should see there you go, you won. Now we have the basics of this test working. Now what we want to do is basically as soon as the user wins, we want to update the Vim test and make a new Vim test. And we also want to uh, make it a little harder for the user to delete this. We don't want to just keep it in the same line every time because they can just hold the X button and it'll eventually delete it and they're not really learning how to use Vim. So let's upgrade this test. Let's also ensure that once the user wins, we display another test immediately. So um, what I'm going to do is create a function called get new vim test. And all it's going to do is create a vim test. Now we want this vim test to be a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, right? So let's add some randomness to it. So we're going to call this empty line, right? And this line, it's all it's going to do is it's just going to be an empty line right it's just going to be an empty line and what we want to do is we want to create 10 separate rows so nine of these rows are going to be empty lines and one of them is going to have the vim test that we want the user to do and what that's going to do is if we create them like that then the user will have to go up or down and then you know figure out how to get to you know this specific uh percent symbol and then delete it so how we can do that is create a random variable const vim test line equals math.random and multiply that times 10 because we're going to have you know 10 lines and let's also floor it so math.4 so we're going to have 10 lines and what we want to do is just go in a for loop for let i equals 0 i less than 10 i plus plus and so if this is going to give us a random number between 0 and 10. And what we want to do is uh, create the new test. So let uh, new vim test equals empty string. And in every iteration, if the current index is equal to the vim line test, vim, sorry, the vim test line, then we are going to say that new vim test plus equals the vim test right otherwise we're just going to say that the new vim test plus equals empty line we're basically just inserting the vim test at a random point inside of 10 separate rows and at the end we're going to return the new vim test and so if we call this function, we should see here, right? We should see 
uh, get new Vim test, we should see, you know, 10 separate lines and we should see that, you know, uh, every time the Vim test is going to be on a different line. So let me save that, refresh this, and you'll see here that, you know, we're going to start over here. And now this time the Vim test is on line number eight. So, you know, you can sort of press that. And as soon as you delete it, you're going to get the U1. But of course, as soon as you delete it, we want to instantly refresh that with a new Vim test. So let's sort of refactor this code and um, let's make this into a reactive variable. So we can say const Vim test and then set Vim test equals use state. And we want to initially set this to be the uh, to be a uh, basic Vim test. So let's just say const ran uh, initial Vim test equals get new Vim test, right? So this is just going to be the initial Vim test that we're going to set this to. Save that. And let's replace this over here with the Vim test. So now we haven't, we've basically done the same thing except this time around what we're going to do is when we change it right if it is the case that the user had one then what we want to do is set a new vim test so we can say set vim test and here we can just call the new function you can call get new vim test function and if we save that right as soon as uh, a user is basically wins the game, we're going to immediately replace the old game with a new one. So now let's see how it is working. I'm going to refresh this. And now if I press X, we should see a new game automatically pop up. There we go. As you can see, right, it's basically working. So as soon as you delete this, the user can get a new Vim test up and running. Now the last thing to do is to just add a little bit of flair to the program. And what we're going to do is create a div and say, you know, I just want to sort of describe the game. So you can move in the uh, editor with the basic commands. You know, you got H, you got J, you got K, you got L, and then uh, delete with X. So we created the, you know, this is basically the game that the user is supposed to play if they want to get better at Vim. And let's also have a counter um, to display how many times the user has won. So let me create this counter over here. So const victories, set victories. Oh my God, victor I E S. Use state and let's set this to zero. So right now, um, what we want to do is display the number of times the user have, has already won. So one uh, victories, this is the number of victories the user has already won uh, times. And then let's use a parentheses. And so basically whenever um, you know the editor does not contain this percent symbol anymore, we know they won. So at this point, we can set the new Vim test and we can also upgrade the number of victories the user had. So we can say set victories to be the current victories plus one. And so if we save this, we should see our updated code. So right now the user has won zero times. Right, and as soon as we delete this uh, variable, then the user should have won one time. There you go. And now, if we delete this, the user won two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. So basically, you get the idea. This is the uh, Vim tutor, the basic, super basic Vim tutor that you can create in under 60 lines of code. So this is 56 lines of code. Obviously, we're importing Code Mirror, which does all the heavy lifting and React and Tailwind. But, you know, it's really cool to see that you can create a Vim tutor in under 60 lines of code. And so, yeah, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, then, you know, be sure to leave a like because that really does help me out. And consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.